I just picked this vehicle up and already I like it a lot. This is the Ford Maverick and it's a hybrid electric. It's a car, it's a truck, it's a hybrid. Let's take it for a drive today on Family Wheels. As we roll off, a request. Give us a like. It'll spread the word about Family Wheels. Also, subscribe and click the little bell to be notified when a review appears. The Maverick here is an impressive vehicle, but I'd like to hear your views, so leave a comment. Thanks. The Maverick comes in three trims, XL, XLT, which is this model, and the Lariat. Well, the question we always have to ask ourselves with a hybrid setup is, is it peppy? And going up this steep hill, I'd say peppy enough, not thrilling though. So for those who want a bit more oomph, you might want to opt for the 2.0-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine instead of the 2.5-liter hybrid that we have here. Drivers who don't need the extra horsepower and torque of the EcoBoost engine can look forward to substantial savings on fuel with the hybrid. It's estimated to use 5.1 liters less per 100 kilometers than the turbo in city driving, a 20 mile per gallon advantage. A 15,000 kilometer year of city driving would save 765 liters of gas. At $2 a liter, that's $1,530. The bed in the back of the Maverick is a marvel of utility. Ford calls it flex bed and says its features were developed, quote, after watching people at home improvement and furniture stores, as well as college kids moving into their dorms, observing how they struggled to load things into small crossovers and cars. Speaking of younger buyers, Ford also calls the Maverick's bed a makerspace and uses a QR code linked to online advice and step-by-step -step project videos. Let creativity flow. Unfortunately, the Maverick has thrown a fail code when it comes to our child seat test. Behind me is the kind of child seat that takes up the most room, rear facing. Up front, I'm 5 feet 11 inches tall, 180 centimeters, and my knees are pressing against the glove box door. So you're either going to have to be a good deal shorter than me, or if you're using a forward facing child seat, there'd be no problem for the person up front. I'm comfortable in the back seat of the Maverick. My knees do not touch the seat back in front of me and my feet are clear of the underside of the seat. Here the seats don't recline, but the built-in angle is pretty comfortable. There's plenty of storage space in the door bins. Other niceties include a couple of USB ports, one type A, one type C, and a three-prong outlet as well. Under the seat, there are storage bins, dividers, or a waste basket can be attached, and the same slot and mount system is used for the cup holder area. In fact, Ford makes available the data for customers to 3D print their own accessories. The interior continues the Maverick theme, clean, useful design without being boring. I'm not crazy about the orange highlights, but they do prevent blandness, and the big parts in the middle are removable rubber. The other materials combine good taste and easy care. Note how the door can hold a water bottle or thermal mug upright without falling over, and the large pocket accommodates a tablet computer or notebooks. The ride of the Maverick is more car than truck. It's smooth and comfortable over a variety of surfaces, from highways to railway crossings, and it handles surprisingly well. Being front-wheel drive, it understeers but doesn't plow through corners. The fact that it's front drive in most specifications should also come in handy when the going gets slippery because the weight is over the driven wheels versus the old nemesis of rear drive pickup trucks, power up front and spinning tires in the back. The first time getting into the Maverick, at least at this specification, can be a bit of a surprise. Why is that? Well, first of all, there is no proximity entry. You don't touch the door handle or press a little button on it to unlock the door. You have to either use the key and hit the unlock, or you have to use this Ford's somewhat antiquated looking uh, system of number buttons on the side pillar. However, you can use the Ford Pass Connect app to unlock the vehicle. The second surprise when you get in 
no start button, no start button, like it's 20 years ago. And in fact, the only level of trim for the Maverick that has it is the top trim, the Lariat. So in goes the key, turn to start, just like pioneer times. Prices across the Maverick lineup are higher by at least $2,000 for 2023 models, although a straight across comparison is clouded by changes within trims. The top spec Lariat, previously only available with the EcoBoost engine, can now be had with the standard hybrid power unit. Also new is the Tremor package with two levels of various off-road and appearance bits added, $3,400 and $5,400 in Canada. In an era when consumers are getting a lot of value from built-in packages, Ford offers the Maverick with a list of options longer than the ever-lengthening receipts you get at supermarkets and drugstores. It's smart counter-marketing that gives thriftier buyers the choice of paying less by cutting out features. I'm impressed, but what do you think? Leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for liking, and thanks for subscribing. I'm Richard Detman, and I'll see you next time on Family Wheels.